The dollar had become the world's main international currency, and therefore there was a steady supply of offshore dollars, much of it originating from the oil trade. In the 1960s, US economist Michael Hudson was working at Chase Manhattan Bank on Wall Street, investigating the balance of payments of the oil industry. In 1965, I was asked by Chase to do a balance of payments of the oil industry. I looked at uh, all of the balance of payments and I, I couldn't figure out where are the profits made. So I went to uh, talk to uh, uh, Exxon, Standard Oil at that, of New Jersey at that time. And I asked the treasurer, where do you make your profits? I can't, you don't seem to have pay any income tax here in America. You don't, certainly don't pay them to the Near East. Where do you make them? And he said, well, we make them right here in my office. He said, uh, and I said, well, where can I? track them. He said, if you look at the Department of Commerce balance of payments under international, you'll find the international, which means, he explained, uh, the flag of convenience countries, Liberia and Panama. The oil tankers were registered in Liberia and Panama, and therefore they flew the flags of these countries. Not only the oil industry, but the mining industry would have uh, ships carry, uh, carrying the raw materials, whether it's crude oil and tankers or whether it's ore, ships that are registered and have the flags of Liberia and Panama. Affiliates uh, and branches in Liberia and Panama would uh, pay very low prices to the exporting countries, uh, to the OPEC countries and to the mineral countries. They would then sell this uh, oil at a very high price, such a high price that uh, the refineries and the distributors in Europe and the United States wouldn't have to, any profits at all uh, to show. And uh, the fact is that Panama and Liberia had no income tax. So as a result of the double taxation treaties, uh, the, the oil industry, the mining industry were able to take all their profits in these offshore uh, banking centers that uh, didn't have to declare uh, any taxes at all, and that's how they became tax exempt. Since the 1920s, the oil and mineral industries had been shifting their profits offshore in order to avoid taxes. City of London institutions began to set up offshore financial centres in small outposts of the British Empire in order to attract a share of these offshore dollars. In 